Welcome, Pirate fans, to Pirate Classics pregame with our guest, head football coach Steve Mushagian, as we break down the 2017 football season opener at Santa Barbara City College. Welcome, Pirate faithful. Hey, I can remember back to that game. Uh, it was Labor Day weekend, our season opener. And if I'm my memory's not right, you know me with the weather, it was probably about 100 plus degrees and they scheduled the game at one o'clock in the afternoon. It was probably the hottest day in Santa Barbara in, you know, the last 10 years. But uh, it was uh, it was quite a quite an afternoon for us. Well, as we talk about Santa Barbara, hot day there. Uh, we were ranked fifth in California to start that season. Uh, and this was the 51st edition of the big game trophy with Santa Barbara City College. But it was only the third time we played them in seven years. So how does that come into like your preparation for this game? Well, all we had to do was flick back to the 2016 opener. I think we were looking ahead to playing Mount Sac in week two in 16 <laughs> and forgot about how talented Santa Barbara City was that year. And Jake Luton uh, was our quarterback. And I remember, uh, I think he threw six touchdown passes in that game, but it was a 47-40 barn burner. We had a couple uh, mishaps. We, we were going in to score and fumbled it, and they ran it back for a touchdown, and then we allowed a punt return. So it made the game closer, you know, than it should have been. But it also was great wake-up call that we couldn't look past them that we had to focus in on Santa Barbara because they took the game. It was a big rival game, and for us, not playing them for about five years in a row, our guys had no idea. They knew the Moorpark game, but they didn't really understand the magnitude of the Santa Barbara City game. So thank God for that 2016 game, which, which really helped us uh, open up in 17. Well, as we talk about 16 to 17, uh, you dropped Jake Luton, who's now at the Jacksonville Jaguars, went to Oregon State after here. We also had a different offensive coordinator in Daniel Algadis. He left in the offseason to take the head job at Santa Barbara, uh, San, Bar San Bernardino Valley. So we have a new offensive coordinator, Jeff Fisher, new run game coordinator with Ryan Clatton. What was the game plan with them? Because the offense was going to look different. Well, it was. And we actually uh, promoted Ryan Clatton to offensive coordinator. And then uh, – Jeff was our quarterback coach and worked with our passing game with with Bob with Coach Bobby, and uh, you know Ryan had always been a run game guy, so it was his first chance to call to call the game. And with two new quarterbacks, uh, with Ricky Town uh, as a bounce back from University of Arkansas, and then Jake Constantine as a bounce back from Boise State, who showed up about uh, a week before <laughs> this game, we decided going in that we needed to keep it a little more simple and we had an experienced uh, offensive line and we had a brand new to had some brand new tailbacks we had Thomas Duckett and Gil Scott Jackson and guys like that uh, so it was their first start but we started off a little slow and uh, our game plan going in was to run the football and then sprinkle in the pass and rely on our defense because we had we had probably our best defensive line we've had um, with Jesse Lemonier and Kenny Turnier, who uh, Jesse's with the, you know, the LA Chargers now, and Kenny will be playing, uh, is playing for Central Florida at the defensive line. We had Jarrell Taylor and uh, All-American candidate Jalen Watson at corner. So we had, uh, we knew our strength was defense. So we wanted to run the ball, shorten the game, and, uh, you know, try to get out of there with a W. <laughs> So let, let's start then with, with the defense. That sounds like where we had the most experience. We had, we had a lot of talent. Uh, Jess Lemonier, he led that day with 13 tackles. Uh, how, how, did, how did he run that line? Because I know Kenny's great. You know, we, those two guys were huge, huge additions. But it sounds like he was kind of the leader that day. What, what did he bring to the table for us on the line? No question. Jesse was a three-year guy for us. You know, he missed, he had missed the season before with his mom's uh, passing of, uh, of cancer, and it really changed his life. And, you know, I couldn't be prouder of, of how much he grew from 2015 season and sitting out in 16 and coming back in 17. He took charge. He was just relentless. He had pass rush skills that uh, are hard to teach. Uh, he was very smart. He understood, 
uh, Coach Hayden's scheme. He, he brought the energy, and he made the other guys around him play well. And then when you had Kenny Turnier at the bookend and you had him wearing number six and number eight, it was hard <laughs> to tell who they were. It drove people crazy. And then we had Jarrell Taylor, who had been a uh, transfer from Santa Barbara City, who also ended up being a D1 player that year. And I think he ended up getting an interception against his old team. And that's rarity for the D line. But those, those three guys up front were relentless. Uh, to say that it, sh it should have been a shutout, um, we kind of uh, – we, we emptied the bench, we played everybody, and we gave up a late, uh, a late score. But I know our guys, our defensive coaches, they always want the shutout. You know how <laughs> yeah. defensive coaches are. But uh, we wanted to make sure everybody got the opportunity to play. But without a doubt, Jesse was the leader that day. Uh, and then we had Trenton Carlson. He kind of put him back on the map at linebacker. And then Jalen Watson, we put him back on the map. Or he jumped on the map real quick with three interceptions and two for touchdowns uh, in that game. Yeah, I was going to follow into Jalen you know, that day. Not many times a corner can get three picks and then run two of them back for touchdowns to help the offense out that day. Uh, that, after that game for him, you know, like you said, they put him on the map. It, it, it's a big-time game. How did his recruiting change at that, after that moment? Well, anytime you have a 6'2 corner that can make plays like that and uh, do the things that he did and virtually just lock down on – on his receiver and take him out of the game. I would just say it was his coming out party. And <laughs> he was only a freshman. And I think everybody, you know, that had watched, started watching the tapes would ask me, who's, who's number one? And I'd say, hey, the guy's only a freshman. He's only a freshman <laughs> and we got him back. So, you, you know, mark, him, mark his name down and ended up doing well. Um, ended up signing with USC and then uh, roundabout way, uh, with one class they didn't accept, he had to get back on it again, and now he's at Washington State. So he's uh, definitely a Pac-12 corner. Yeah. Now, now let's look at the other side, right? That, that's the side that you really like to talk about. Uh, lose Jake Ludden to graduation. He's at Oregon State. We get two kickbacks in Ricky Town, who co comes in in the spring, and then Jake Constantine comes in right before. Maybe let's talk about Ricky first because he had Coach Algadis for a little bit in the spring because uh, Coach Fisher wasn't on board until the summer. How was that transition for him and his development for the season? Well, I think it was uh, Ricky had gone through the whole spring. And I remember the one thing about Ricky was he was so, when he first got back, he was so afraid to make a mistake. And I finally pulled him aside and I said, Ricky, just go have fun again you know, this is the number one thing for you coming in here and coming back here is I want you to find the love for the game again. And I think he did that. And I think he felt pretty good. Uh, you know, we still had Brock Doman and Jay Vanderjack, who are our 2018 quarterbacks, uh, that were pushing him and had some competition. And then the good thing was when Jake came back, uh, we were able to gray shirt both those young quarterbacks. And so it became a two-man uh, quarterback rotation but we didn't really know it took us four games into the season before you know we had to go kind of play it by ear so we played Ricky got the start because he was with us he had to you know we didn't change the offense too much but you still change the play caller you still change the uh, the position coach you change some people that are around you, you get some new receivers and new running backs in so it was, it was new for, for Ricky, and he handled it like a pro. He did a great job uh, for us. And, and Jake came back, you know, being as competitive guy as, as he is, another local kid. You know, you have a St. Bonaventure and a Camarillo kid that are two, you know, legendary quarterbacks in, in uh, Ventura County on the same team. And I, I have to say, I was worried about it at first. I did not have a problem with, with anything that I was told that I would. Um, you know, with family, they stayed completely out of it. They let the kids compete. Uh, we were in a lot of good situations where they both played. It probably statistically had it only been one of them, you know, they might've been able to lead, you know, the state in some categories, but uh, for the sake that they both were unselfish, 
uh, and they did a great job. It was it was a wonderful experience, and then it ended up with uh, you know with Ricky transferring the University of Pittsburgh mid year, and then Jake going to Weber State and taking them to two uh, you know FCS quarterfinal appearances, and now uh, you know Jake's Jake's a graduate transfer at Washington State. So. Their careers ended up good. It was a lot of fun having both those guys at quarterbacks. They're both fierce competitors and, uh, you know, they were different styles and Jake was kind of the riverboat gambler and, and Ricky was kind of the, the system, uh, system uh, pocket passer. So they kind of offset each other and, and helped us in certain games. One of them was sometimes their style was better than the other. So, it ended up uh, at this point in the season, you know, in the first game, we had no clue. We had yeah. no clue where, how it was going to play out. <laughs> so you got the new quarterbacks. We're going to do the split. Earlier you talked about Gil Scott and Thomas Duckett. Thomas Duckett, as a freshman, first college start, he goes out and just has a day for himself. 145 yards on the ground, 17 carries, scores his first college touchdown. You know, did that help with that? You know, he has that breakout game. It helps get the quarterbacks kind of settled in. Uh, and, and it sets the tone kind of for the year that, hey, we're going to do this a lot more balanced than before. Uh, for the previous years, we were pass heavy, right? Definitely. And especially when Jake Luton was there, we were very much pass heavy. And, you know, in all di in, in differences when you have two different uh, play callers, Daniel was much more of a – you know, he's probably a 70-30 guy past the run, and, and Ryan was more, you know, 50-50 to 60-40. Um, and then some of his passes were off off of the run. So uh, mm -hmm. it just kind of happened because of the defensive looks, or it would have been 50-50. But it was, it was a good contrast. Thomas Duckett did the same thing on offense as Jalen Watson did on defense, both freshmen. I, I left that football game and I thought, if we, you know, if, if we develop things at quarterback in 2018, we've got some, we've got some really good players coming back, you know, with, with Jalen at corner and, and Duck at, at tailback. And I believe in that game, I think Gil Scott Jackson was still hurt. He had bounced back from Arizona State and I think he had a rib injury and couldn't play, uh, if I'm mistaken, or was limited that week. So I'm, I'm trying to think back on all that, but Duck, Def, Duck definitely uh, had a great game and put himself on the map and made us a legitimate uh, running, rushing offense now. <laughs> <laughs> and when we talk about the, the freshmen, maybe we could let some people that don't really understand the turnover that's involved, especially at the level that you got our program for football, where there's guys transferring at mid-year, there's transferring in the summer, there, there, there's guys that transfer before even putting on a VC uniform. Uh, that's where the program's at. So coming out, playing well on the first game, that does that kind of set the tone now for not just the year, but possibly a two-year span, especially with all the freshmen? It did. I think it did set a tone. We knew, though, that we had about a half a dozen uh, NCAA qualifiers, Duckett being one of them. It kind of felt like, you know, you could lose. If they keep playing like this, we might lose them. But, uh, <laughs> you know, with Duck, they worried about, you know, his height and his weight for a while, and that that uh, slowed his recruiting a little bit. And, uh, but for some guys, we thought they'd had opportunities to leave, didn't. They had so much, they had such a positive experience staying at VC that they, uh, they stayed and, and played their sophomore year. We had two or three offensive linemen that could have left and wanted to stay. And that's kind of what built the 2018 uh, Southern California championship team was the, that those guys up front that stayed together along with Duckett. Yeah. So, and that, that's kind of what we're doing this fall since our season has been moved to the spring. Uh, this is a good start because we're going to end our Pirate Classics for football with the semifinal game uh, sometime in November. And then the final, the SoCal final game is our last two of Pirate Classics. So kind of introducing fans that may not have watched as much at this time, introducing to those guys that have that put a real big mark on our program, uh, that, that that's great. How many of these guys are, are you still in contact with? Uh, you talk about these games. You know, thinking about as a freshman in college, you run for 145 yards. That's going to be a no matter where you're at. That's going to be a great memory. No, no question. I I stay in contact with these guys. I just talked to Trenton Carlson the other day. 
you know, I've talked to Jake Constantine quite a bit. Jalen and I just talked the other day too. He'd lost his Brendan Daly uh, band and oh. wanted to get a new one, so it, it broke. So we had talked about that. We, that's a real, that 2017 team was a very close knit group. Dane Nelson, I mean, there's a lot of guys that have responded back to uh, seeing the classics going to be shown and they're excited, you know, between. 16, 17, 18, and 19, you know, that, that last three, four years has been a real special, real special group. And, you know, we hope to keep uh, building on it. We've sent 260 players in 10 seasons. If you can do the math, it's pretty easy. About 26 a year have moved on to four-year programs. And we're very, we're very proud of that. And then to look at how many of those have graduated, um, I walked down the street today and saw my 2014 quarterback, Mark Evans. He was, he was painting the house, you know, helping, uh, you know, getting a post COVID job and, and then painting the house and came over and gave me a hug. And he got his, you know, was a standout quarterback at St. Bonaventure and just finished his degree. So that, that's what it's all about. we kind of get these guys. We say, you know, when you go to community college, you go to junior college, you, there's a deficiency somewhere. It's either in academics, maybe it's height and weight, maybe it's speed, and we're going to do everything we can to fix that deficiency and then get you back on path again. And then, you know, watching them succeed is just a great, great feeling as a coach. I know our coaching staff feels the same way. Yeah, and that, that's, you know, the success on the field probably does translate because of the success off the field in the classroom. Uh, and you talk about graduations and all that stuff. Uh, you know, as we end this first pregame, getting ready for uh, the kickoff Saturday night at 6 o'clock for this game against Santa Barbara City, are there any last, uh, last comment statements you want to tell to the, the people out there watching this pregame and hopefully watching the game on Saturday night? Well, I think you want to watch the energy. I did remember that, uh, that Alvin Pacheco got his first punt return and ran it back, the first punt return of the year. Uh, ran it back for a touchdown, so it was uh, it was very exciting to uh, to remember that part of it too. I think just the energy and the focus, and that some of these guys that are uh, you're going to see playing in this game, you could turn around you and watch them uh, playing. Like Daniel Moraga will be playing at Pitt on Saturday. Kenny Turnier will be playing Georgia Tech at Central Florida. Jesse Lemonier again with the Chargers and. You know, hopefully the Pac-12 will get back soon and and uh, and play, and and some more of our guys will be able to see Jalen Watson. Thomas Duckett will be playing his second season at Southern Utah in the spring. So, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to I, shoot Sam Flowers, wide receiver. I mean, he there's a whole bunch of really good football players on that 2017. It might have been one of our most talented teams, and. You know, it was just a really tough injury that happened in the uh, semifinal game you know, yeah. in the playoffs. But uh, that's for another day. It did give us it did give us some some motivation and some emotion uh, going back, which will give, be our last game to going back yeah. to the other side. So it's yeah. funny how it all plays together. This game kind of started it all off, and and uh, it kind of it's going to be exciting to relive some of these great memories. Yes, yes, it will. So fans, Saturday night, 6 p.m. kickoff on the VC Sports Network, brought to you by Crown Plaza Ventura Beach. Uh, go on, click on the link, uh, cook some food on the grill, maybe have some cold beverages, and enjoy a great, great game of football brought to you by the Ventura College football team. Coach Mushagian, thank you for uh, our first show, and we'll see everybody next week when we uh, get ready for week two. Looking forward to it. Go Pirates. Yeah.